Hi everybody, Tim Hughes here. I'm the CEO and co-founder of, of DLA Ignite and I've got with me today Brandon and Brandon and I are going to talk about SEO, search engine optimization. Um, we're not going to get technical, we're going to keep it really, really, really simple and if there's any SEO questions that you've got um, then then please ask them um, and, and, and we'll try and answer them. Though I've got the feeling um, that Brandon knows this stuff about SEO. So, Brandon, where can people find you? Uh, so, for everyone that's listening or watching, I created a special gift for them. If they actually go to my website at seooptimizers.com, that's S E O O P T I M I Z E R S.com forward slash gift, they can find that there along with my contact information and a bunch of classes I've done over the years. I've put up there for free so they can watch it at any time. And, see how to do a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about step by step, how to like actually implement it. So they can find me there. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Brendan. That's, that's, that's great. Um, so um, I, I actually want to, before we get in and talk about SEO, how did you get into it? Is it, is it something you've done for years or did you fall into it? How did you get into SEO? Then I got my degree in business marketing and the first job I got out of school was helping out a company out with their digital marketing and, I didn't really know much about digital marketing. They said, don't worry, we don't know much either. We're going to learn along <laughs> with you. Yep. It's kind of interesting. So they took me at classes and workshops and seminars and learned about digital marketing. I was helping out with like their SEO, doing social media, helping out with paid ads, doing email marketing, kind of helping out with everything. And this is back in 2007. I just kind of realized that everyone's probably going to have a website in the future. And everything I mentioned definitely works to get traffic, but SEO is just a way to get free traffic. So I thought, let me just focus on SEO. Let me try to just tap into that free traffic. And over the years, worked at different advertising agencies and different mom and pop shops. And before work or after work in between, I've worked on my own company and built it up to where I was able to eventually quit my job and focus solely on this and been doing that ever since. Excellent. So, so, um, so what is SEO, search engine optimization? Explain to us what it is. SEO is search engine optimization, which is optimizing websites for the search engines, which really is just Google nowadays. So when you search on Google, there's ads at the top. Those are all paid ads. Mm -hmm. Right below the ads are the organic listings, the free listings. And SEO is about getting your website in those free listings. There's 10 websites on that first page of Google. So just trying to get you in the organic results. So in terms of a page, the, the first th three or whatever are where people have actually bought the search, I guess. Uh, so the ads, there might be zero, one, two, three, or four ads at the top, but it always changes. So some people might see one ad, some people might see three ads. It's going to vary depending on tons of different variables. Like if you search for the same keywords, we're going to get shown slightly different ads. The organic results are going to be slightly different, but yeah, most will be four ads at the top or a zero, somewhere in between there. And, and one of the things I guess we can all do is actually go and put our, our own company into to Google to, to see what what comes up. Yeah, but you don't want to rank for your company name. That should, no matter what, you should always be ranking for your company name. But that's the we want to rank you for non-branded keywords. So anyone searching for anything with your company name, they already know who you are. You already yeah, exist. Absolutely. Uh, but it, uh, I, uh, for example, we use um, the CRM um, called Nimble. And I happened to be doing something just earlier on. So I put Nimble CRM into, um, into Google. And of course, HubSpot buy that search because they're a competitor. Yeah, those are all paid ads. So yeah, yeah, they could pay for ads, yeah. But that's not a good tactic either because then you start bidding war and then you're going to be competitive Absolutely. with your competition. And those keywords are very, very, very expensive. And it's also like you're searching on Google and you're looking for, let's say, in and out or like McDonald's. And you search for McDonald's and then an ad pops up for Burger King. You're like, it's not what I was looking for. Similar, but... Most people are not going to go to Burger King if they're looking for McDonald's. They're going to go to what they're looking for. So those are really expensive paid ads that have really low returns. They sometimes work, but they usually do more harm than good because now you're going to keep bidding against your competitors and your competitors are going to bid against your name. And now you have to bid against your name to keep your brand up there without your competitors showing. So it's really a back and forth battle. And I try it's, a, it's, a, it's a zero sum game, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, it sometimes works, but it's usually better just not to bid on competitor keywords. There's other ways to do it that are much better, such as 
making custom audiences in Google Ads. So in Google Ads, you can make a custom, you could remarket to people. So anyone that goes to your website and doesn't make a purchase, you can follow them around. I don't know if you've seen those banner ads, like if you I've look on that, Amazon, yeah. you look at a product, you don't buy it, it's called remarketing, but you could do that to your competitor's traffic. So you could take anyone that's been to any of your competitor's websites and then anywhere they go on the internet, your ads will follow them around. And now you're not bidding on your competitor's keywords, you're actually bidding on their traffic, which works much more effectively. And your competitors are never gonna know, which is the nice part. So you're not gonna start those bidding wars and it's gonna be a lot safer and much cheaper too. So, so how does Google rank websites then? I'm, I'm asking that question. I'm not saying how do I get on to page one of Google. I'm one. Of, it's, it, let's start something fundamental about how does Google rank websites? Oh, they have spiders that go around crawling the internet. But it's like these things that go out onto the internet. Mm, yep, they have these spiders that they have that they go and crawl the internet, reading all the code line by line, trying to read all the code and make sense of it, throw it in their algorithm and try to figure out what that page is about. And there's over 200 ranking factors. So it's just trying to figure out what Google is looking for. That feels like a puzzle. There's a lot of pieces to that puzzle, but some pieces are a lot bigger than others. Like adding text to your website is very, very important. So every page on your website needs to have content. That way Google can figure out, read, and know what keywords you're targeting. But unfortunately, Google doesn't really care what keywords you put on your website because they don't trust anybody without what are called backlinks. They want to see other websites talking about you. The more websites that talk about you, the more trust Google gives to you. And then they look at those keywords on your website, but it doesn't really work the other way around. And so what is the backlink? The backlink is a clickable link from another website that points to yours. So let's say we're reading an article or on Forbes.com and in there it says Brand Leibowitz. If you click on that and it goes to my website, I'd be getting a backlink from Forbes.com. So the more websites that talk about you, the more trust Google's gonna give to you. So, so, so there's a, so two things there. Um, one is keywords, which is understanding in an organization what keywords you want to be famous for. And the other thing is backlinks. Yep, those are two more important aspects of SEO. There's many other variables that go into it, but Google really relies on content. The more content you have that's relevant, that's going to help Google understand what keywords you're targeting and then the backlinks help build that trust up because without the backlinks google's never going to rank a website because it, ultimately google comes from the assumption that we're all trying to game um google yep google doesn't trust anybody without backlinks you got to build that trust up and building trust with google is not the easiest there's lots of ways to build trust but it takes time you gotta be yeah. google looks how old your website is how long you've been around how what type of backlinks you're getting there's if you have an https if you have what's what's that sorry an ssl certificate but right. almost every website has that nowadays if you don't it says in big red letters not secure and no one's ever going to want to visit your website in the url bar that that's when you get like a you go to a website in a browser and it goes you get like a big red warning mark do you really want to go to this this web browser um this website yeah, it says not secure. Yeah. So, 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 um, so, as an organization, one of the things that we need to do is 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 think about what um, what keywords we want to be famous for, but also backlinks. So, whenever we write a blog or um, if we're on a podcast or whatever, what we're looking for, I'm guessing, is ultimately for. So, for example, you're coming on here. I'm going to put the details afterwards on um, on YouTube. Therefore, what you'll be wanting is your um, a link to your website, et cetera, et cetera. And ultimately, I guess, is that a backlink? Um, yeah, if you post it onto your website, it's a backlink. But you yep. post it on social media. Social media doesn't count for SEO. Okay. It's all blocked from Google, except for Google owns YouTube. So they would probably look at those. But those backlinks still don't count for SEO. They're all right. no follow. But those aren't good backlinks because... In the past, it was the number of backlinks you had, the higher you're going to rank. Now, it's not the number of backlinks. It's the number of quality backlinks. And right. a quality backlink to Google is a backlink from a website that's related to what you're doing. So if you're getting a backlink from YouTube and LinkedIn and Facebook, Google's just going to think of your social media website. Mm -hmm. So it's okay for me because I do some social media marketing. But in general, you want sites that are related to what you're doing. So let's say if you're like a lawyer, you want other websites related to law. 
you don't want just any random website. Like if I linked out to a lawyer, it's going to look a little strange. Like why is an SEO company linking to a law firm? But if a law firm is getting a backlink from like a courthouse or a judge or something that's somewhat related to what they're, what they're doing, that's what Google wants to see. Right. Um, and and you see ultimately a competitive advantage in in having a strategy based around this. Every website that ranks on Google is going to have some backlinks. I haven't seen any websites that don't have backlinks that are ranked on that first page of Google. Almost every like 99.999% of the time, if they're ranked on that first page of Google, they have some backlinks. You might just have one backlink, but they have something that's building that trust up to Google. Right. And um, I, I once read somewhere saying that you needed to have, within an article or a blog, you needed to have like 10 backlinks for um, to Google to index it. Is that is that true? Is there any other rules like that that you need? No, there's not a number of backlinks you need in your content or anything like that. And if you want Google to find your pages, you can just submit it to Google Search Console. So you just go to Google Search Console, create an account, and you can individually submit URLs there. I'd make sure you have a site map as well for your website. That way that helps Google with indexing and finding all the pages on your website. But yep. having 10 links in an article might seem a little spammy unless the article is like 10,000 words. But if it's just a 100 word or 200 words and there's 10 links in that, that looks really weird to Google. Like you got to write for people. You don't want to write for search engines. So right. don't just try to throw backlinks in there to throw backlinks in there. That used to work, but nowadays right for people, not search engines. Okay. So, and that's, that's another uh, point there in terms of um, what, what people are, are looking for uh, or what Google is looking for is ultimately they, they don't believe anybody. Therefore you, you actually do need to be writing for people. And if you think about what Google wants is you're going to ask a question and it wants to provide the best answer possible. Therefore, um, what, it, what it needs that is, is to be providing that best content otherwise you don't use google right pretty much they want to provide the best result that way you keep going to google and making google more money because the more you search on google the more likely you are going to click on those ads and help google make more revenue hmm. so um so what do you see that's um that's working out there in terms of um using seo um, i see lots of my clients results it just depends on what keywords you're targeting, how much SEO has been done to your website versus the competitors and how long it's going to take. But it definitely works if you send the right signals to Google and show them that here's my website, here's the keywords I'm targeting, make it easy for them to find those keywords, know what keywords you're targeting, and then also building a strong backlink profile. That way Google understands and knows who you are, that you're trustworthy, that you're, you've been around, that other people are linking out to you and kind of like voting for you, saying they trust you and that's going to help Google then give you those results. If you're a local business, you want to make sure you're like Google Maps and that you're ranked in like Apple Maps and Bing Maps and Yellow Pages and MapQuest. And the more maps you're in, the higher you're going to rank on Google Maps. So optimizing that if you're a local business, but just depends on what type of business you are. If you're e-commerce, then focusing on ranking like your category and your product pages and the search results and trying to get you in the shopping listings and trying to just tap into as much free real estate as possible on that first page of Google. Because because one of the things that um, uh, annoys me is where you're looking for a particular um, organization and for some reason or other, they're not on Google Maps. You kind of want that when you're looking at Google Maps and I'm, I'm us using my hand here to like open or close the, the map. In effect, you see that, you know, whether it's, it could be even a petrol station or a, um, an Indian restaurant, you want that to actually be on the map, don't you? Yeah, well especially accurate information. That's the number one thing. So Google's not going to rank a website if there's inaccurate information on all over the internet. So if you're looking for that restaurant and on Google, they say this is their address, but on Bing Maps, they have a different address. And on Yelp, they might have a different address. And on another website, they might have a different one because they moved around. Then Google's going to get confused mm -hmm. and they're not going to want to show them. But if they go in and update all their listings to make everything accurate, then Google's going to say, okay, we actually think this is your location because you have all these listings. They all show the same location. It's called NAP, name, address, and phone number. Really very important for local to make sure it's consistent across the internet. It's kind of like you're building backlinks to your Google Maps by mm -hmm. having other maps that have your name, address, and phone number consistently 
or accurate the same across the board. And having the same um, opening hours and things like that, because I, I get I get emails from Google saying, like over Christmas, is are you are you open at those particular times? Um, and like you know, what they want is to be able to show have a uh, a customer experience that people can go. I can see that that Indian restaurant isn't open on Christmas Day. Yep, that is important as well. But name, address, and phone number are the most important because hours change. They know it kind of varies, and it could change. Day by day, like you said, for holidays, you might have a random day where it changes hours. So Google understands that sometimes the hours might be inconsistent across the internet. But if your business name, address, and phone number is different, that's where they're really going to lose that trust and not want to show you in the map. So you got to search for your phone number or search for old addresses on Google and see if your old addresses still show your old location. If so, got to update it with relevant newer information because consistency is really important to Google. Um, so is there anything else that we can be doing from a, um, an SEO perspective? I mean, there's so much more. There's over 200 ranking factors, but that feels oh, like a puzzle. So give us some examples of those ranking factors then. But they get a little technical. So okay. going into coding and changing like an SEO title tag or meta description or adding header tags to your website or search engines create schema.org, which is a coding language that helps mark up and enhance your listing. So sometimes you'll see like stars or you'll see all these enhancements in the search results. It's all through schema.org. So incorporating that into your coding, making sure your images are named with descriptive file names before you upload them to the internet because Google can't read images or videos or podcasts or audio yet. They're getting closer, but they really rely on text. So anytime you have any text, making sure or file names, making sure you name them with descriptive words. Don't just throw extra keywords in there, but describe what that is. And I mean, those are some more higher level. It gets a little technical. That's why I have videos I've created that show step by step how to do a lot because it's tough to say. Here's how you optimize the title tag, which is that blue clickable link that shows up in Google. Every platform is going to be a little different if you're using like WordPress or Shopify or Wix or Squarespace or have custom CMS. It's going to be slightly different where those places are, but that is a really important aspect. Is making sure your title tag is optimized with keywords at 60 characters. You don't want to go over after that. It gets kind of cut off and truncated by the search results, but that's a really, really important place to put your keywords is that SEO title tag. And and what about URLs on um, on websites? Is that, is, is, is that something it looks at? They used to look at the having exact match domain. So in the past, if you want to rank for SEO company Los Angeles. If you bought SEO company Los Angeles.com, you would rank for that. But Google devalued that a long time ago and said they don't look at exact match domains as much. They still look at it a little bit, but it doesn't have that big of an impact that it's not going to make a huge difference. But in the URL of your pages, your sub pages, your blog posts, they should have keywords in the URL. Most platforms will do that automatically. That helps Google read because the more places you have those keywords in text, the easier it is for the search engines to read and know what you're actually focused on. That's why the URL, the title of the page, your images, the file names need to have descriptive words that describe that page. Right. So, so I mean, it, 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 whatever you're doing, it, it's there's a there's a there's a very key um, clear process that you need be, need to be following to actually make sure that you're getting the the the, the rankings that you would expect on Google. Yep, and getting Google to trust you. That's really the main thing. It's building up that trust. It all comes down to that trust. And then once Google trusts you, then making sure you have all the keywords in the correct places on your website. But first thing first is build that trust up because you can make your website perfectly optimized for Google. But if they don't trust you, they're not going to thank you, unfortunately. Uh, Brandon, it's 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 a fascinating subject. Um, thank you so much for coming in and and sharing the um, it, in, 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 in such simple terms. Um, it's been it's been fantastic. Thank you so much. Remind people where they can get hold of you. So for everyone that's listening or watching, I created a special gift for them. They actually go to my website at seooptimizers.com. That's s-e-o-o-p-t-i-m-i-z-e-r-s.com forward slash gift. They can find that there along with my contact information and my classes I've done over the years, I've thrown up for free so they could see step by step how to actually implement a lot of the stuff that we talked about. And also, if they want to book some time on my calendar for free website analysis. I'm happy to really look at their website from an SEO perspective and see 
what's working, what's not working, and how to get them to that level that they want to be at, and they could book some time on my calendar for free is there as well. Awesome. That sounds that sounds fantastic. Um, so it's SEO optimizers as you've got on your name tag, isn't it? Yep, SEOoptimizers.com. Brilliant. Brandon, thank you so much for coming on and, and talking to us today um, and explaining to us what SEO is and, more importantly, what it isn't. Thank you for having me on today. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Brandon. Appreciate it.